play an ever larger part as the United States Army continues the development of air assault tactics. At American bases, new methods are perfected. Sometimes there are crashes. But out of the wreck come the airborne troops. Most of the gliders are landed perfectly and can be picked up again by a speeding plane. A large new transport glider in a test flight with full load. A 105 millimeter howitzer comes aboard. Then a jeep. Then a file of soldiers. Gliders can land with heavy equipment even on bad terrain. Paratroopers, the most spectacular element of airborne armies, rehearse aerial tactics. In closely timed group jumps, they're ready for combat immediately after landing. In air assault tactics, the paratroops are vital. The United States Navy demonstrates its rocket gun. A landing craft throws a fierce hail of explosives toward shore. Equipped with rockets, small Navy vessels can equal the firepower of men of war many times their size. Land equipment carrying rocket launchers turns loose a barrage. Rocket projectiles propelled at tremendous speed by the reaction of exploding gases against air are not new, but never before this war have they been used so widely. A Navy plane fitted with rocket racks is loaded up. shown in slow motion. Highly developed in the past few years, the ultimate possibilities of rockets have by no means yet been realized. Home from China, General Joseph Stilwell takes a brief furlough at his California home before reporting to duty in a new command. The famed leader of the retreat through Burma, with Mrs. Stilwell, looks through the family scrapbook, recalling historic moments in the general's career in China and Burma, which led to the building of the Stilwell Road. With his giant schnauzer, Stilwell enjoys a moment of recreation at the beach. General Stilwell has now been named commander of United States Army Ground Forces. In Washington, D.C., he takes over his new duties. One of six giant assembly plants strung across the North American continent, workers complete the building of B-29 super fortresses. The bombers, only recently sent over Japan for the first time, are already in quantity production. Deep in China, precious fuel for the B-29s is flown into this 20th bomber command base. From the incoming transports, Chinese troops roll the 50-gallon drums to the storage area.
fed into long troughs, the gas is pumped to one of the large storage tanks from which the super fortresses will feed. It takes up to two hours to refuel a B-29 and tons of gasoline. Over the Japanese-held Rama Bridge in the Bangkok area of Thailand, newly arrived B-29 combat crews unload bombs. From bases in China and the Pacific, the super forts continue to strike. A Navy task force ranges enemy waters striking enemy positions on the China coast, Formosa, and islands off Japan. Closing in now for heavy air blows, carrier planes make ready and take off. Coming home from a raid on Formosa, the planes head in for high-speed landings on the narrow deck. Some have been badly damaged. over the side, but medical corpsmen are able to carry away the wounded pilot for treatment. Wreckage has to be dumped overboard to clear the way for more landings, and the tense, hazardous operation goes on. Rapid tempo, with new amphibious landings speeding the advance, General MacArthur's forces drive on in the campaign for Luzon, key island of the Philippines. The 6th Army strikes south. The 8th United States Army strikes from the sea. First films, delayed until now, show the initial landings on Lingayan Gulf and heavy fighting against attacking Japanese planes. The skies are cleared. From one ship of the Armada, General Kruger keeps careful watch. And so does General MacArthur. MacArthur comes ashore on one more beach. This time, his goal is Manila important objective on the road to Tokyo. Supply come in in great quantity through rough water. More and more equipment to back up the battle for Luzon. Inland, infantrymen push ahead through country where the enemy may be concealed. on the road to Manila, with greetings from the Filipino allies all the way. <music> Filipino guerrilla soldiers who greatly aid the advance receive hand grenades. spontaneous celebration for men of the 6th Army. The campaign comes to a climax in the announcement that liberating forces have entered Manila. The first landing force, striking in Lingayan Gulf, drove rapidly toward Manila. At Subic Bay, another landing. 
south of the city, still another. And then, on to Manila, capital of the Philippines.